Hey, everyone. Almost all of Firebase's APIs are asynchronous. So you might be wondering, what does that even mean, and how do you call them? So today, I'm going to show you three different ways how you can call Firebase's APIs asynchronously from your Swift code and why this is important. So we're going to look at callbacks, at combine, and async await. So let's get started. So I've decided to use the Firebase Authentication SDK to explain this. And we have a sign-in form that captures the user's email and password. And then we're using the sign-in with email and password API to sign the user in. So we've got the text field to capture their email address, a secure field for the password, and then the button to handle um, a login process. And I'm using a view model to capture all those um, pieces of information. And when I tap here, we will be taken into the view model. You can see that we've got the published properties for email and password. And then this one here is important, is signed in. We will set this to true if the user has successfully signed in. All right, so let's start implementing this login function here. And I'm going to do so by first getting the auth object. And that has a function which is called sign in with email and password. So let's use this. And then we can use the user's email address and their password. And then the next parameter is the completion parameter. And that is a callback that will be called when, it, when the user has successfully signed in or if there has been an error. So when I tap the Enter key, um, Xcode will turn this into a closure for me. And this has two parameters, the first one being the off data result and the second one being the error. And let's first start by doing some error handling. So if let error equals error, and then we want to assign this to the error message field. And this will be displayed on the UI. So error.localized description. And then we can return from here because there is no point in trying to continue if there has been an error. All right, next up, we'll want to extract the user from the auth data result. And I'm going to use the guard statement to do that. And if we don't get a user, so if it's nil, then we want to display another error message. Uh, for example, no user. And then we need to return as well. So at this point, we can be pretty sure that we do have a user because um, the guard statement guarantees that the user is not nil. And because that's the case, we can basically just say is signed in is true, and the user is signed in. Um, and also, let me add a little print statement here. User has signed in as, and then we'll print their email address like so. All right. And because we are in a closure, we'll need to use self to set this property. And email might be nil. So we'll use the nil coalescing operator and print an empty string if that's the case. Let's run this application and see it in action. So I've already connected this application to a Firebase project, and I've created a test user that we're going to use to sign in. So now um, the UI says, hello, it looks like you're not signed in. Tap here to sign in. And then I'm going to provide the email address of the test user, test at test.com. And then tap the sign in button. and. The UI says, hello, you're signed in as test at test.com. And you saw in the console that um, our print statement here has printed the user's name. Now, where has it gone? 
There we are. All right, so that's the first way and probably the most common way to handle asynchronous processing. You will just use a callback closure. So let's next look at a different way to do that. And I like to show you how to use Combine. So Combine is Apple's reactive framework for processing events over time. And what that really means is that, you know, for example, UI elements, when the user starts typing something into a text field, they will emit events. And you can basically set up a processing pipeline and handle those events as they come in. And similarly, for uh, an API like Firebase Authentication, where you send in user and password, and in response, you get a result that is an event, and you can handle this event using Combine and process it. Let's take a look at how this works. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to delete this closure because we don't need this anymore. And I can leave the rest of the call in place because, as you will see, this ha doesn't have to change. We can basically just use this in all different ways to call asynchronous APIs. So let me scroll through the top of the file to show you that I also have already imported Combine and Firebase auth Combine Swift. And this is the Combine support we implemented for Firebase. So let's go back again. And now if I um, press Option and click on this, you will see that this function also has a return value of future. And this is a sign that I can use this um, using combine. In the future, you can see that I, I get the same types back that I did in the callback closure. So I get an auth data result, and I get an error. All right, so let's take this. And what we want to do is we want to map this and extract the user object from the off data result. All right, so let me use the map operator. And you can see here in the code completion, Swift has detected that we get a re return value of off data result and error. So we're going to map this and extract the user object from the off data result. So let me turn this into um, parameter, and then inside here, off data result dot user. So basically, I'm just grabbing the user and returning it out of the map function. So the next step is, in case something goes wrong, we might get an error. Um, so for now, I'm just going to replace any errors with nil, like this. And in the next step, I either have nil or I have a user. So I can um, use the map operator again. And then see if the user is not equals to nil. And if it is nil, it means that we weren't able to sign in. If it's not nil, it means that we have a user, so the user has signed in. And then in the last and final step, we will assign this Boolean to the is signed in property. Let's run this now and see if this still works. So we're still signed in. So let me first sign out and then sign in again using the same user information. And we signed in correctly. So you can see we signed in as user, and that's the user ID. All right, so this is how you use Combine. And let me actually make this a little bit simpler so you know that instead of using uh, a name parameter, we can use an anonymous parameter. So we can replace this by saying $0 and the same down here. 
dollar zero. So that's basically the first parameter. And by doing so, it becomes even more compact. All right, so that's how you use Combine to call asynchronous APIs. Now let me um, show you the third and last one. Let's use async await. So async await is a feature that Apple shipped with Swift 5.5, and it allows you to call asynchronous APIs um, in a much more comfortable and much more linear way. So if you remember how the um, closure looked like that we implemented for callbacks, it was a little bit complicated and you know um, pretty nested. And you will see in a minute that when we're using async await, this will become a lot less nested and we'll have a much more linear flow of code. So let me first get rid of all of this. And as before, we can just continue using this here. And what I want to do is I'll just say I'm going to call this piece of code using await. Um, and the compiler will jump in and say, well, you know what? Um, we are not in an asynchronous context, so you can't just say you want to call this using await. So let's use the compiler and, and actually use Xcode to fix this error. So it added the async keyword to our function to basically say, well, now this function is asynchronous. And now we have another error because sign in might throw. So um, you see that the signature says sign in with email and password. Async throws. So we need to handle the exception. And to do that, we'll just add try. And then we will need to wrap this in a do. catch block, and then um, we will just print the error. So now that we handle the error, we can try to capture the result of this um, sign-in function. So let's look at the signature again. So now, instead of having a closure, we receive the off data result as a return value from this function, which is really neat. So uh, what we can do is we can say let auth data result equals try await. And in the next step, we'll just extract the user from the off data result. And now that we have the user, we also know that we're signed in, so we can set the is signed in property. Okay. So, um, and you know, let's do a print statement. So this should make the compiler happy. All right, cool. So when I now try to run this, I will get another error message because we are trying to call this from a non-asynchronous context. So the compiler says async call in a function that does not support concurrency. And this is because the on submit view modifier here is not asynchronous. But we can just wrap our call in a task. And by doing so, um, opening up an asynchronous context here. And then let's not forget to actually prefix this with await. So we open the asynchronous context, and then we await the call to um, viewmodel.login. And we'll need to do the same done, done there. So let me just copy this piece of code paste it here. And now we should be able to run this. We're still signed in. Let me sign out. 
and sign in again. And now when I have filled in the information test at test.com, we sign in using async await. One more thing that we need to, to take care of. So in the console, you'll see this error message. Publishing changes from background threads is not allowed. Make sure to publish values from the main thread by your operators like receive on on model updates. So let's go back into our view model. You can see the same error message here in purple. And this indicates that when accessing self.isSignIn, we are trying to access something which has an impact on the main thread. So is signed in is a published property, and we are using this in our UI to drive a state change. And because any changes on the UI happen on the main thread, this is a problem because the authentication call here that might return on a background thread and we're now trying to access the foreground, the UI from a background thread. And that's not something that we should be doing. And the easiest way to fix that is to actually use the main actor annotation or attribute on this function to tell Swift, please execute the login function on the main thread. So now when I run this again, This should be fine, and we should no longer receive this warning. OK, let me sign out and sign in again. And there you go. So we signed in, and no, no warning, no error message. Everything's clean because we told Swift to execute this on the main thread. Cool. So there you have it. Three different ways how to call asynchronous APIs in Firebase from your Swift code. Um, and now you might be wondering which one to use. And you know, it's largely a matter of um, personal taste or preference. So um, since async await is now available um, starting with Swift 5.5 and it can be backported to iOS 13, you might start using that if, you, if your code base um, can be compiled using Swift 5.5, and if you um, are OK with supporting iOS 13 and upwards. If you need to support an older version of iOS, or if you can't yet use async await for reasons, then you can use either a combine or use the callback approach or you can use a combination of all of them. So if you're using callback approach in your code base and you want to migrate to async await, you can do so if you want to combine uh, combine and async await, that's fine as well. Personally, I think combine is a great way to implement UI-related uh, functionality, whereas async await is probably more suited for anything that has to deal with your backend. But as I said, it's a matter of taste. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.